Few weeks ago, I dared to buy this little electronic DIY kit. This is a VU meter or an audio level indicator. I thought it was very cheap and also interesting to work with. It came in a very simple packaging, it's just a plastic bag with all the components you will need. It doesn't have any instruction manual, but it doesn't need one because on the PCB you will see the markings with all the components and the values of where the components should be placed. To complete this kit you will need a soldering iron and a solder. If you don't have one, you can find cheap ones on the internet and there are many different models. I'll leave a link in the description for this DIY kit and also for the soldering iron that I'm using. What makes this all work is the LM3915N1. This is an integrated circuit or IC chip, which is a LED driver circuit and is very cheap, but nowadays it's obsolete. Out of curiosity, I was looking at the data sheet to see all the details about it, but this is not needed to complete the circuit, so let's get started. So I start measuring all the resistors to make sure they are going to be on the right place. So I just check the value with my multimeter and then put them in the PCV spot where they're supposed to be. This DIY kit is a very good exercise for beginners that are learning to solder and putting together PCBs with their electronic components. So it's very good, cheap and it's also very fun. It won't take you long though to complete this kit, it takes about 30 minutes to complete the whole thing. As I told you, the PCB has the markings of the resistors and the values so it's very easy to put every resistor and every component in its right place. So that's why in the end you don't need an instruction manual to complete this, but it would be nice to have some information about the circuit. So all we need to do is place the rest of the components, very easy, very straightforward. After that we're going to start soldering all the components. Now when it is time to put the LEDs, we have the markings of positive and negative on our PCB. And it's common knowledge that the LEDs has a long and a short lead. So the long one is the positive or anode and the short one is the cathode or negative. While placing the components and soldering, it's a very good idea to pay attention to the details. If you make a small mistake, the circuit won't work. And at the moment of placing the IC, make sure it is pointing to the right direction. And then I'm going to use a 3.5 millimeters audio cable, but you can also use any kind of connector as long as you are getting an audio input signal. Now this is an stereo cable, so we have left and right signals in two different wires and a ground wire. So I'm going to separate the ground wire and then I'm going to twist together the left and right signals because we only have one bar, so we are only reading a mono signal. If you had two of these devices, we could measure the left and right signal separately. Here I'm solving a little problem where I put a capacitor where it shouldn't be, so that's why you have to pay attention to the details. And then I was ready to make the first test. With a small potentiometer, we can set the sensitivity. Here I connected the circuit to an external audio recorder that has a built-in mic and also an audio output for headphones. Mm -hmm. 
Then if you bridge these two paths where no component is supposed to go there, you can see that the brightness of the LEDs is higher. And then to finish this project, I 3D printed a case for this whole system, so now it looks a lot better. So now that it's ready, I can take it to my car while listening to music so it looks very cool or I can use it at the office where I edit audio and video so I can see the audio levels. I hope you liked this video and if you did, you know what to do. I'll see you in the next project.